principal thrust of our testimony was to call upon the Republican Party to repudiate the content and the plans that were set forth in a young executive's report recently prepared in the Department of Agriculture. Put busted farmers on President Nixon's family assistance welfare plan, a plan that has not yet been passed, but that proposes $2,400 a year for a family of four or $600 per person. This is to take the place of your income in agriculture. The battle lines are well defined and the fight is really on. The family farm is in a fight for survival, a fight for its life, because this plan would scuttle the family farm agriculture in America. Farmers, unite or perish. Is brought to you by NFO Public Information. Farm program choices are unusually clear in this year's election. The farm voters in the United States are going to have a sharply outlined choice between agricultural programs in the November election, which will also affect every business on Main Street in rural America. The Republicans are campaigning on a freedom to plant slogan, defending the set-aside program in the Agricultural Act of 1970, and are contending that low prices, and low price supports are needed to allow the U.S. to expand exports in a highly competitive world market. On the other hand, Democratic presidential candidate George McGovern is clearly committed to high agricultural price supports and has said one of his first acts will be to instruct the Secretary of Agriculture to lift price support levels to 90 percent parity. When the two sides snipe at each other, the McGovern forces charge that Secretary Butts is still advocating that farmers adapt or perish, the phrase used by Butts and has been widely quoted. NFO has given the same testimony to both political platform committee hearings and urged both parties to repudiate the USDA Young Executive Plan. Here for coverage on that Republican hearings is NFO news analyst Phil Allen. The National Farmers Organization has presented to both the Democratic and Republican platform committees the same policy recommendations. Charles Frazier, legislative representative for the NFO, spoke to the Republican Farm Platform Committee August 16th at Miami. This committee was chaired by Senator Roman Ruska of Nebraska. There were representatives from 14 states on this GOP Farm Platform Committee, including two or three farmers in the group. I asked Charles Fraser to review the NFO testimony. The principal thrust of our testimony was to call upon the Republican Party to repudiate the content and the plans that were set forth in a young executive's report recently prepared in the Department of Agriculture. This report laid out a line of policy along these lines. It called for a phase out of farm price support programs over the next five years. They wanted to do away with the non-recourse loans that have been available on such crops as the grains and cotton for quite a number of years. And if they could not do away with them, they called for reducing the rates to disaster levels. This young executive's report also called for discontinuance of FHA real estate and operating loans. Next, I asked Mr. Frazier what the NFO recommended as to future legislation, specifically as it applies to collective bargaining. We ask that there be no modification of the old Capper Volstead Act of 1922, under which all marketing associations and cooperatives are formed in the agricultural area. And we also called on the Republican Party to 
continue the Department of Agriculture with a cabinet post level so that farm and rural people would have a central spot in the federal government in which they could raise their questions, pursue their policies, and in effect deal with the problems of all agriculture and rural development out over the country. When Mr. Earhart Fingston, former NFO vice president, first revealed the existence of this plan at the Democratic platform hearing in Sioux City, Iowa, he also said the NFO would ask the Republicans to repudiate it. I asked Charles Fraser, did he get any indication from the chairman, Mr. Ruska, that the GOP would? He assured me that policy-wise, the administration denied any responsibility for the contents of this report and went on to state that they would not pursue the policies that were recommended to the secretary in that particular report relating to termination of programs. The senator wanted very badly to assure us that they would not proceed to follow the lines recommended in the Young Executive Committee report. You have heard Charles Fraser, legislative representative of the National Farmers Organization, in a report on his testimony August 16th during the Farm Platform Committee of the Republican Party. Mr. Fraser said that Senator Roman Ruska of Nebraska made a special point of assuring that the present administration would deny any responsibility for the young USDA executives plan and would not pursue the policies the young executives recommended. NFO first brought exposure to the public about the USDA Young Executives Committee blueprint when former NFO Vice President Earhart Fingston testified at the Democratic hearings. For an explanation of what farmers have at stake, here's NFO newsman Earl Miller. In addressing the Iowa NFO rally at Iowa State University, Mr. Fingston explained the disastrous plan by the Young Executives Committee of the USDA. He spells out here what is in that policy about disregarding people and farm income. Here's one that's a quote. Forget people and farm family income and be consoled solely with the viability and the efficiency of producing at lower cost. Put busted farmers on President Nixon's family assistance welfare plan, a plan that has not yet been passed but proposes $2,400 a year for a family of four or $600 per person. This is to take the place of your income in agriculture. Mr. Fingston explained that under this policy, it would eliminate four out of every five farmers and a direct move to let corporations take over agriculture. They recognized that it would reduce the number of farm operations by 2,100,000, an elimination of four out of every five. Now here, I think, is where we're inclined to each of us individually fool ourselves. I am sure that every one of you sitting there now when we're talking about eliminating one out of four out of every five, that each one of you thinking it's the other four guys in the row that are going to go. Yes, you do. I know you do. I've been fooled on that myself. I thought I was one of them. Till I really got to figuring this out, what it means. Now, breaking the production up to 600,000 units, I'm talking about totally over the United States. You'll have to remember that a strawberry patch wouldn't have to be quite as big as a cornfield, would it? To be an enormous operation. So I've tried to break these up according to the various commodity and sift out what it would have to amount to for us here in the state of Iowa. 
it would have to amount to about 14,000 acres per operation, or about a township apiece. A township has 36 sections in it. So I'd like to have you look in your check checkbook first for the balance to see whether you got the money to buy another 13 or 14,000 acres. Then you'll find out who it is that we're talking about. When they talk about eliminating four out of every five, they're not talking about the guy next door. They're talking about the guy that's sitting in your seat right now. That's the guy. Now they say, supposedly in this document, that it's all for the cheaper production of food. And yet there are things in the document that very clearly point out that it is a move to have corporations take it over, a corporate agriculture. In Finkston's presentation, he emphasized strongly the real death blow to farmers was how the land evaluation would be reduced. Now here's the real shocker, to me at any rate, what it's going to do for it and for these giant corporations. They point out in this document that doing the things, part of which I have mentioned here, and eliminating farm programs should drop the price of land by better than 50%. They do not estimate how low that could possibly go. But they point out that a high land value is of little use to a second generation owner. And so they reckon or figure that if they can bring the price of land down also, in my words now, to disaster level, that then the investment in agriculture will be so much more or less, so much less, that we can still, or the, whoever's doing it, can produce the farm commodities for even lower farm prices. Now, why do I say this is the bell ringer of them all, as far as I'm concerned? If they have their way, you, I, each and every one of us is gone, because you cannot operate that farm if there is no profit in it. Even if you've got it paid for, taxes will take it. Now you picture this. When the individual farmer can no longer make a living, when they mess it up with what they're proposing to do here, that there cannot be a profit, then as they anticipate, the price of land will have to go down. Why? Who's your buyer? Your fellow farmer can't buy it. He's got trouble of his own. You think the corporations are going to get in and bid against each other? That is then the market. And you'll sell it at whatever they want to give you, which probably will be for what you owe against it. And I visualize it under those conditions to be your total income Nixon's welfare of $2,400 for a family of four. If you're old enough, your kids are gone, you and your wife, $1,200. That's the plan. The McGovern forces will contend that their policy allows the family farm and rural communities to survive, while the Nixon Butts program means inevitable bankruptcy for farmers and rural businesses in the drive for enough cost-cutting efficiency to survive at world price levels, repeating the old butts phrase that farmers must adapt or perish. We asked W.W. But Swain, Director of NFO Public Information, how he analyzed the Young Executive's USDA policy. The Young Executive Committee plan of the United States Department of Agriculture, a plan that was secret up until the NFO made it public at a hearing in Sioux City, Iowa, would eliminate four out of five of the present farmers, do away with all farm programs, do away with the farm parity price concept so that the farmers wouldn't know what they're supposed to get, 
Also, it would re reduce the value of our land by over 50 percent. The battle lines are well defined, and the fight is really on. The family farm is in a fight for survival, a fight for its life, because this plan would scuttle the family farm agriculture in America. NFO has called on both political parties to repudiate the policy scheme. The Democratic Party already has, as their plank says. We repudiate the report of the USDA Young Executives Committee, which would eliminate the family-type farm by ending price supports, loan and purchasing programs on all farm commodities, and which would put farm people on welfare rolls. In testifying before the Republican Platform Committee, NFO Washington Office Director Charles Frazier told the committee, until it is repudiated, we must assume the young executive's proposal has substantial support in the administration and represents the planned policy for agriculture in this administration. As farmers have said all across this land, is it any wonder that most Americans are agreeing with Republican Congressman Alvin Okonski's famous words, farmers unite or perish. Collective bargaining is the key to the farmer's success. Copies of the Young Executives Plan are available from NFO Home Office, Corning, Iowa. 125 copies for $5, or 10 copies for $1. Every farmer and businessman should have a copy, so send for them today. Farmers, unite or perish, was presented by NFO Public Information from the Home Office in Corning, Iowa, the Farm Bargaining Center of the World.